Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. Something a little bit different on tap for you guys today. We're going to play true and false, answering some burning questions around the Cowboys for the season, for the offseason, preseason, all that stuff. We'll break down it, whether this will become true or false. So let us know what you think in the comments section as we go along. First up, the Dallas Cowboys will extend Dak Prescott. Type T for true, F for false in the comments section here. We'll break this down. Now, Prescott, of course, entering the final year of his rookie contract. The Cowboys have been vocal about his about their desire to extend Dak Prescott for reasons that really should be pretty obvious by this point. He's young, he's played very well, or at least above, above average for the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, to make note here, as you mentioned earlier this week, Carson Wentz did just get a four-year, $128 million extension. That's going to bump up the price for Dak Prescott, which might actually delay when this deal gets done because Dak Prescott has a legitimate argument that at minimum, he should get the same deal as Dak Prescott. The raw numbers are in his favor. Completion percentage, yards, interceptions, yards per attempt, touchdowns just below. Now, yes, Carson Wentz has missed time. The actual throws have been pretty similar, but Wentz missing time is actually in favor of Dak Prescott because he's never been hurt for the Cowboys. Prescott has always been healthy. So back to the question, I say true. The Cowboys will extend Dak Prescott. Maybe it's not this month. Maybe it's in July. Maybe it's even in early August. But I think before we even get to week one of the regular season, we will see the Cowboys and Dak Prescott work out a long-term extension. Now, the sticker shock's going to be really, really bad for some Cowboys fans out there. Carson Wentz getting $32 million per year. I have a tough time seeing Dak Prescott coming in significantly below that. Maybe a little bit below by like a million, but if you can get Dak for less than what Carson Wentz got in the end, that actually is a team-friendly deal. Carson Wentz reset the template for a Dak Prescott extension with his dear deal with Philadelphia. Let's stick then with more contract talks here. Will the Cowboys extend Byron Jones before the end of the season? Type T for true, F for false. Jones is also entering the final year of his rookie contract. Of course, it's the fifth-year option for Jones, which Dak Prescott does not have because he was not a first-round pick. Jones right now recovering from Austin hip surgery. The latest reports are that he's going to be fine and could even be back in time for training camp, which, if so, is a big boost there from the Cowboys. And if you've watched the show for quite some time, you know, I really, really wanted Byron Jones to play cornerback. They finally moved him there, and he thrived. Of course, there's only one year playing cornerback, and the price tag for a, a top-tier cornerback is going to be at least $14 million. And I'll be honest, it might be more than that, because the cornerback market hasn't really had a true and drastic reset in quite some time. It's been inching up forward incrementally in the past couple of years. Xavier Howard just reset the market to an extent the $15.05 million deal. If Byron Jones plays well again, I could see him asking for that. Now, my answer here, though, is false. I do not think the Cowboys will extend Byron Jones before the end of the season. Instead, I think the Cowboys, as they are too often willing to do, i.e. Dak Prescott and Demarcus Lawrence, they are willing to wait. And if Byron Jones balls out, it's going to be more than $15 million. If he plays like he did in 2018, especially that first 15 or so games, it's going to be expensive to re-sign Byron Jones. Maybe Jones gets pushed out. I'm not sure that is convincing of the case there, or 100% the case there, but it could be the scenario. So for the Cowboys, I think they wait on Byron Jones, which in the end might make the price tag even higher than it already is if he plays as well as he did in 2018. All right, folks, giveaway alert for you. As you see on your screen from Playbook Products, we have an awesome set of Cowboys coasters for one lucky watcher. Now, these are not normal coasters. They're lasered etched with some of the Cowboys' greatest plays. Larry Brown's second INT in the Super Bowl. And it's Super Bowl 30. Michael Irving's two TDs in that 18-second span against the Bills. Felix Jones' re record-long playoff touchdown run and the halfback pass back in Super Bowl 12. Now, here's how you guys can win. DM me a photo of, of Father's Day, either you with your kids or you with your dad there on Twitter, at WhatGoingDowny. DM me that, that photo, and A, if you don't win, it's okay. We'll feature the photo on an upcoming Cowboys Report show. And then we'll draw one lucky winner from those who DM me, at WhatGoingDowny. If you're watching on Facebook, you can DM the page too, but at WhatGoingDowny is definitely the easy way there because you guys already all follow me, right? I, I assume you all do that. Again, we've only got the one giveaway, so make sure you DM me. 
If you don't win, you can still go to playbookproducts.com and use promo code CHATSPORTS for 10% off. And by the way, of course, they've got more than just coasters there. But that is our giveaway. So DM me that Father's Day photo at what going down to be entered to win. Next up on Cowboys True or False, let's talk Randy Gregory. Will Randy Gregory play in a game this year? Type T for true, F for false. As I'm sure you all know by now, Gregory is currently suspended indefinitely by the NFL. We know how the NFL works. It is a wild card when it comes to punishment and all of that. Now, he is doing well right now away from the team, and the Cowboys are still hopeful that he can make a return and make a big impact for them. Of course, they're smart. They're not banking on a Gregory return. Instead, they invested in several different defensive ends this offseason. Of course, A, as you said, they paid Demarcus Lawrence. They traded for Quinn. Then they drafted Joe Jackson and Jalen Jelks, and they signed Kerry Hyder. So they brought in four different defensive ends. Now, I think in particular that has more to do with Taco Charlton's iffy play, let's put it that way. But for the Cowboys and Gregory, they're not banking on it. Now, with that said, I say true. I think we see Randy Gregory, maybe this is maybe this is out there, a, I think we see him play this year. Now, maybe not in week one. I think at some point we see Randy Gregory reinstated by the NFL. And a big reason why on this, by the way, folks, the NFL is inching more and more towards being okay with marijuana, you know, like they should be. And if they want that poster child or that, that guy to prop and say, hey, see, we've done good things here. We're helping players out. I think Randy Gregory and Josh Gordon make the most sense. So I think true. We do see Randy Gregory play this year for the Cowboys. All right, folks, make sure you're subscribed to us here on YouTube. That link is right there at the bottom of your screen, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. But you're watching right now, and we know that there's a good amount of you that watch the show each day but actually aren't subscribed. So, you know, go subscribe, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. We're the best Cowboys channel out there. Next up, one that I'm pretty sure we might disagree with here, the Cowboys will finish top 10 in takeaways. I've said this before. The thing that has prevented the Cowboys even from being top five and not just a top 10 pure unit has been the lack of turnovers forced and lack of takeaways. Here are the Cowboys numbers over the past five years. They've ranked 20th, or excuse me, 20 takeaways tied for 16th, 21 takeaways tied for 16th, 20 takeaways tied for 19th, the uh, 11th ranking or 11 takeaways that they ranked in with uh, 32nd in 2015, and then back in 2014 they were actually second with 31. But the past four years for the Dallas Cowboys, they have not been a team that forces turnovers. They have been a bend but don't break defense. That has led to at least last year being a top 10 defensive unit, but they have not really approached hitting that top 10 number. So will they finish top 10 this year in takeaways? I say false. I do not think they will get there at this point with what we know about this Cowboys defense. They're going to be a top 10 team, but I don't think they're going to be top 10 in actual takeaways. Now, we disagree, and I put this up on the poll earlier today as, as a poll on the channel. Make sure you subscribe to go vote. 85% of you said yes. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that there was so many who thought the Cowboys would finish top 10 in takeaways. But I think TW1 summed it up very well. And this was the most liked comment, by the way, on the poll. They were great last year, which the Cowboys were. But he does not remember the last time they could ever take the ball away. It was back in 2014. Top 10 in yards and scoring, yes, not takeaways. I completely agree. This will be a top 10 defense in yards allowed and, and, score, and points allowed but they will not be top 10 in actual takeaways. If they can get to top 15, I'll be a little bit happier. All right, true or false next up, how about Jason Witten time? Well, he only played 25 snaps per game. Now, Witten is still the number one tight end for the Cowboys. Yes, he took a year off, but let's not kid ourselves here. Jason Witten did not leave ESPN to come back and play a handful of snaps each game. And the Cowboys are already hyping up Witten coming out of OTA, saying he's quicker and faster than he was last time he played back in 2017, which... Okay, best shape of life season. You know, that's the case going on there. Now, the Cowboys have said they want him around 25 snaps again. That was the expectation. Here's the thing. Do we think Jason Witten is going to take a massive reduction in snap counts? Yes, there's Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz. And yes, those guys were, will get on the field. But when Witten played, he played. He barely came off the field. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case this year. But Witten's back. And until... He really shows mass signs of decline or was just god-awful on the field. 
I am going to assume that we see quite a bit of Witten. So I say false on this one. I think he plays way more than 25 snaps per game. Frankly, I'll put the over-under more at 40. He, the Cowboys average over 70 snaps per game. Witten is not going to play a third of them only. He's going to play at least half of these snaps. So for the Cowboys, I think it's an easy over here on this one. False for me. He plays more than 25 snaps per game. All right, folks, send me your Father's Day photos. It can be you and your dad, you and your kids. If you're wearing a Cowboy jersey, bonus points there. We will feature them on a show later this week because Father's Day is coming up. We know how important they are. So DM me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. Send me a photo there of you and your dad, you and your kids for Father's Day. Or you can also message the Facebook page, facebook.com slash CowboysWorldDowny. That's how you watch the show. So send me those photos, and we will feature them on a show later this week. One last Cowboys true-false here. Will Zeke Elliott lead the NFL in rushing? I think I know what you guys are going to type in. Type T for true, F for false. But let's break down the possible reasons why and why not here. Now, Zeke has led the NFL in rushing two of the past three years. And he would have led in 27 if he hadn't been hurt because he did, did lead the NFL in rushing yards per game. I think that Elliott is once again po or poised for a big-time season. He's going to get the ball. Yes, they will hopefully on his touches at least a little bit, but Elliott has been so good the past three years, the Cowboys are going to give him the ball. Now, he's passed 200 carries in two of the past three years, would have done it again in 2017, but maybe those numbers come back down a little bit. Maybe it's only, let's say, 280. I think that's still enough for Elliott to have those stupid good yards on the ground and hopefully be more involved deeper downfield in the passing game. But for my answer here, I kind of gave it away. It's true. I think Zeke once again leads the NFL in rushing yards. I don't know why it would change. In reality, he's pretty much done it each of the past three years. Why is that suddenly going to change? I, yeah, maybe he gets hurt. That's a difference there. Elliott has the most yards of the past three years by a significant number. That will not change this year. I say true. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.